The Daily Northwestern, the student <laughs> newspaper of Northwestern University, and reporters Nicole Marcus, Allison Brown, Cole Reynolds, and DJ Barwadi pro- published a uh, disturbing story about the university's football program. We now know that. That broke last week. Uh, moments after that, I'm told about 15 minutes after that, that's where the football portion of the Northwestern newspaper story picks it up. David Gold is the managing editor of Inside Northwestern Football. And David joins us right now on WLS AM 890. This guy has been everywhere. David, good morning and welcome to WLS. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. Happy so, Friday. Uh, happy Friday to you, buddy. So just a, a little bit of background on you. You're a transfer to, uh, to Northwestern. You're a, you're a Boston guy. Uh, you come to Northwestern. You get involved in all things Northwestern football. And this story breaks. You guys are all over it. David, I guess the immediate question I have for you is, how long has this been going on, and how long do you think people actually knew about it, and how long was it un- uh, swept under the rug? So that is the question that we're still trying to figure out. The whistleblower left Northwestern in November of 2022. So we know it was going on as recently as this past season. Now, my incredible colleague, Bradley Locker, reached out to a source who said that one of these hazing allegations known as the car wash was going on as early as this player graduated in 2007. So within that time frame of 2004 to 2007, one of these hazing activities was occurring already. So the question is, has it just been occurring this entire time? Was there a break? something that we are not able to confirm at this time. So just to be clear, and I don't want to get too graphic, but the car wash, if I'm to understand correctly, is where there are players in the shower and they are forced to touch parts of their body with other players that are in the showers. That's what the car wash is. Disturbing stuff. Mm -hmm. That is why... That is why Northwestern University, one, placed uh, Pat Fitzgerald on leave and then subsequently let him go. Um, And then there's another thing, uh, if I'm not, is it called the Shrek? So there is a thing called the Shrek list where um, a player, if they mess up in practice, would get a clap over their head. According to this is according to the Daily Northwestern and confirmed by our sources at Inside and you. um, And then. Because of that, there would be a punishment they would have to do. And uh, just warning to your view, to your listeners, some of this is very graphic. Um, they would do there would be things like naked bear crawls across the locker room, naked slingshots where a player would have to use one of those elastic bands and slingshot themselves across the room. <laughs> um, naked quarterback center exchanges. So a lot of involvement of nudity in these hazing allegations brought forward by the whistleblower and confirmed by multiple players. This is David Gold. He is the managing editor of Inside Northwestern Football. Uh, Jane? Uh, David, uh, good work here with your journalism. But as a student journalist, how nerve-wracking was it to break the story? I know the Daily broke it, and then you guys write 15 minutes later with all this information. Were you nervous or were you like, yes, this is what I came to do? Um, it was definitely not what I came to do. We are student media, but we're also students, and a lot of us care about Northwestern football. It is our alma mater. We love sports, so that was the tough part, but I'm really proud of our team at Inside and You for everything we did to work together on it and provide what we knew in the facts. And at the end of the day, it's our job as journalists, whether student, whether professional, it's our job to hold the people in power accountable for any actions that not only are dangerous towards student athletes, but just just blatantly like not acceptable in today's society. Well, well, and, and you hit the nail on the head right there because the, the, the stuff that you talk about is, is is stuff you hear about maybe in prison yards. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's barbaric on any level. Uh, we're talking with uh, David Gold, managing editor of a Northwestern, uh, uh, their, their, the Northwestern football arm of their paper. You said that there was evidence of this in uh, 2022, the n- notorious 1-8 and eight season, bad season going on for Northwestern football. Um there has to be, David. There has to be. And you have to know this. There has to be video. There mm-hmm. has to be pictures. What do okay. we n- not know yet that we're going to find out in the future? So we do have photographic evidence of this so-called Shrek list. The whistleblower did send it over to the Daily Northwestern, um, who saw the photo, and ESPN's Adam Rimberg also confirmed it. So we, we have 
photographic evidence from a whistleblower of what's called the Shrek list on a whiteboard in the middle of the locker room. Um, we do not have any video yet. Whether or not we receive any uh, is still up in the air. Uh, we are checking with our sources, but it has been very quiet on that front since Pat Fitzgerald was let go on Monday evening. You know, David, my son played Division Three football at a smaller school and obviously nowhere near the scale of Division One. I. I mean, my goodness, these guys are really a- as good as it gets, even with a 1-8 and eight season. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the practices of coaches, locker rooms, things of that nature. So, David, is, it, is there any plausible deniability that Fitzgerald may not have known about this? Because I don't know what goes on in the locker room, nor do I know what coaches are around the locker room. Is there any chance for wiggle room with him? Because you don't go hire Dan Webb, who's, you know, Northwestern law is as good as it gets. Dan Webb is as good as it gets. Um, Is there any deniability that he may not have known? Well, according to the investigation done by former Illinois Inspector General Maggie Hickey, there was no direct evidence that Pat Fitzgerald knew what was going on. So there is plausible deniability from Fitzgerald right now, and that is what I'm assuming his lawyer, Dan Webb, will try to do as they fight for the $42 million remaining on his contract for Northwestern to have to pay out. Um, but it's hard to believe that saying we have evidence that this started in 2007, Pat Fitzgerald's first season as head coach was 2006. It's hard for me to believe that in 17 years there was never – no, he never overheard anything. There was no inclination. But once again, it was probably more of the plausible deniability. If you don't tell me, I don't know. But, but, but you know, again, uh, hard to believe and proving it in a court of law, which mm-hmm. is where this is going to end up, is another mm-hmm. thing. Uh, David Gold is here, managing editor of Insight and you, and here is Nick Gale in the newsroom. Uh, David, got two questions for you. For, first, is anybody pushing the AD on this now? And I, I realize that the AD has only been there a short, a short time, but does this Will this continue to go up the chain, do you think? I believe so. So Dr. Derek Gregg, we had not heard from him since the original Friday uh, press release sent out by Northwestern when Fitzgerald was suspended two weeks. He has been radio silent. Um, The players had issues with him when Fitzgerald was terminated on Monday night. Gregg was on vacation and addressed the team via Zoom and then did not take any questions. He did fly back the next day and meet with the team. Um, but furthering on that, we at Inside New just released a huge piece on baseball coach Jim Foster, who was terminated mm-hmm. last night. Um, and in our reporting, we found that Greg actually pawned off the hiring of Foster to two boosters. He did not sit in on the final interview. Wow. So there is a for a coach who we reported created a toxic workplace where six, half the players transferred out and half the players needed therapy by the end of the season. Wow. There's a lot of questions about what does Derek Gregg know and why did he make these decisions right now, where right now in Northwestern's um, athletic de- department, there's a lot of questions about student safety, student athlete safety. In 2020, before Gregg got hired, Mike Poliski had to resign over sexual harassment, what he n- knew about sexual harassment inside the cheerleading, cheerleading the team. So there's a lot of questions right now going on within Northwestern athletics. And what is there a culture of, not protecting student athletes over protecting coaches. You know, it's funny because we sit here and we we think, how can this go on? And 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 how does this uh, be allowed to happen? And and my cautionary uh, uh, words to any parent, because every parent out there that has a kid that plays high school football, or a daughter that's a volleyball player, or a daughter that's a softball player, and she's playing at a high level, or he's playing at a high level, they go do these college visits, and you know, you want the best for your kids, and then something like this happens, and man, I got to tell you, it would just it's just wrong. Um, again, these are allegations, but it certainly seems to me like these guys know what the heck they're talking about. I mean, uh, I mean, it is just, uh, it's unbelievably mind blowing to me. David Gold, a managing editor of Insight NU, let me ask you this before we let you go. How does NU field a football program this fall? Do you think there's a chance that it might not happen at all? No, there's a 0% chance that Northwestern doesn't play football. Wow. There's too much. There's too much Big Ten money on the yeah, line with the yeah. new TV contract. There, there's sixty million dollars. Even if nobody shows up to the stadium, there's sixty million dollars in TV money, and that, that will not pass. Up. And what you just said is why. 
people get away with this kind of thing yep. because yeah. there's too much money yep. involved. Yeah. Well, buddy, I, I really appreciate one. I appreciate your work and I'm in yeah. awe of you because, uh, you know, you you're the kind of people that will take uh, a journalism and, and make a career out of it. Take it to the next level. Uh, they, there's not many people that do it better than the Medill School of Journalism at Northwestern. We're going to hear more from David in over the years. Yeah. 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 And we'll probably see David on CNN or, uh, you know, Fox or Don't MSNBC forget about tonight. Us, David. Yeah. Don't forget about us. Hey, we're going to stay in touch well, with you. OK, pal? Absolutely. I would just say one thing is maybe when you have a massive scandal, don't try to sweep it under the number one journalism school in the country. Just That's right. <laughs> Bingo. Maybe know, maybe know what you teach your students inside your own home. And, and, Very, good. And, and, Very good. And another thing, uh, to your point, is you know, when you lawyer up, you also have to understand that that Northwestern Law School up there, <laughs> yeah. pretty darn good, pretty good too. too. Mm-hmm. Hey, it was really nice to make your acquaintance, pal. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you, David. Hey, thank you, guys.